You are to find Suleiman and locate the stolen file in order to save mankind from a disaster of unprecedented proportions. The premise of Dying Light is a familiar one. You are contained in an area with infected zombies and you are trying to survive whilst looking for a possible cure. There are plenty of games already in this genre, so how does Dying Light differentiate itself? By making a zombie apocalypse fun and terrifying at the same time. Dying Light is the spiritual successor to Dead Island. Created by Silverlight and set in the city of Haran, there are a lot of similarities to its predecessor. Unfortunately, it's these similarities that are Dying Light's weaker points. However, what makes this game great are the new features and its more serious tone. This atmosphere is set from the beginning. You parachute into the infected city and you are immediately greeted by danger. It's an exhilarating start to the game and within the first couple of minutes you can see what the game is about. The main story is nothing special and you will see many of the events coming before they happen. Although the story can be linear, there are some great characters to meet and they have believable, fleshed out personalities. Yeah, you do. You want to return the favour? Keep my dipshit brother from killing himself. Unfortunately, there are some humorous individuals which can ruin the vibe of the game. The comedy falls flat the majority of the time and it's a shame that it takes away from the great work done to create this beautifully dark world. Glasses are filthy. What have you been doing with them? Visually, the game is very pretty. The zombies look grotesque and their physics are authentic. The lighting is spectacular and gives the city an abandoned, lonely feel. When you climb to the top of a high building, there is utter silence and you can hear the wind blowing. The music and sound effects further accompany the feel of this game. These sound effects still made me nervous after playing for over 30 hours. The city really does feel alive, excuse the pun. Aside from the main story, there is plenty to see and do in Haran, such as interesting side quests. There's a duffel bag in a locker on the second floor. I'd like you to bring it to me. Since you'll probably open it, there's no point trying to hide the fact that there's $24.7 million inside it. One third of it is yours. If you Random encounters. That was a close call, my friend. Climbing antennas. And crate drops, which are a lot of fun. You will see them flying overhead and you need to race towards them before anyone else does to collect some very useful supplies. Dying Light's most unique feature is its day and night cycle. Time is always ticking. Each day lasts about 20 minutes of real time, but the contrast between night and day is staggering. By day, there will be zombies littering the streets, but you'll be able to bypass the majority of them, be it through combat or running across rooftops. By night, the game becomes a survival horror. Visibility drops, the music changes, and the most deadly zombies come out to play. These zombies will pursue you like nothing I've seen before in a game. It is terrifying, especially when you use the slow motion camera to look behind you. There is a great risk reward system at night because you gain double XP for your actions. It's a great way to build your character at a faster pace and unlock some of the great abilities available to you. You gain XP for your in-game behaviour. For example, if you leap over walls, climb buildings, make huge jumps, you'll be rewarded with ability points. If you fight zombies, humans or cause explosions, you'll be granted with power points. There are some awesome abilities and you can watch a tutorial for each one. Some skills are better than others, such as the drop kick, the sliding kick, and the grappling hook. These skills make your survival a lot easier in Dying Light, and this game can be difficult at times, which in the early stages can be quite frustrating. Combat is one of the weaker points which has been brought across from Dead Island. Sometimes I would hit a zombie 15 times without killing it, whereas I may hit another zombie twice and they would die. It can feel unpredictable. You cannot upgrade your power points without partaking in combat, but the inconsistency of the combat can feel very tedious. It wasn't until I was about 10 hours into the game when the combat became more fun, and it is now very enjoyable. 
You receive better weapons and the head stomp skill is an essential perk to purchase when it becomes available. My advice is to stick with this game because the fighting does get better the longer you play it. As you can see from the footage, parkour is a huge part of the game and it works really well. The city is designed thoughtfully to allow you to traverse the landscape very efficiently. When climbing walls you need to be looking exactly where you want to be climbing and it works most of the time. The biggest issue with this system is the button layout. Jumping has been assigned to the shoulder buttons whereas the traditional jump button is assigned to search in the environment. It takes a long time to adjust and can be aggravating, particularly in tense moments where you try to follow your instincts and miss vital jumps. Dying Light has seriously impressed me. I was never a big fan of Dead Island, but Dying Light caught me by surprise. Do not be put off by the first few hours of this game because it soon finds its feet and from then on it's a very rewarding game to play. This game can be truly terrifying at points and even by the end of the game when I had nearly maxed out my stats, I was still afraid of the night. I give Dying Light an 8 out of 10.